she's just so full of life and I want to know why why her she was only a little girl and to Amber's killer I'm asking you today please turn yourself in give Amber justice do you know that over the years due to the advancement and improvement of DNA technology about a million stale cases in the USA as far back from the 1900s have been solved but a few of these cases, like Amber Hagerman, are looking up to the newest DNA technology for a breakthrough. This technology has the hopes of so many to bring the murderer to justice for the abduction and inhumane killing of nine years old Amber in her neighborhood in Arlington in 1996. Let's find out the possibility of this case if the DNA technology gets stronger. On the 13th of January 2021, a 25th anniversary was held in honor of Amber Hageman at Avenue E. Arlington and the Arlington Police Department in Texas addressed the media and gave a very promising update on the progress of the investigation. And we're excited because this year there is new technology when it comes to DNA and we're excited about this year being able to submit that and hope that we can get a better DNA profile on the killer. This update has kept us going for the past 27 years of this incident. It was on the 13th of January 1996, 27 years ago, one mildly sunny Saturday afternoon in the city of Arlington in Texas. The weather was comfy and fair to nature. The temperature was a typical one that is good for some adventure, so Amber thought. It was a perfect day for bike riding and nine-year-old Amber Hageman and her five-year-old brother Ricky left their grandparents' home on their bikes having promised their mother, Donna Williams, they wouldn't go more than a block from the house, just like they usually do. The thing I told Amber was, you know, you stay with your little brother and you'll come right back. They soon found the perfect spot for an adventurous ride. It was an empty parking lot of an abandoned Winn-Dixie grocery store. Just like every young kid their age, they always attempted to go beyond the limit. And so Amber went for a more exciting ride on the ramp in the lot which was already blocks away from home. The temperature began to drop and it was soon time to go home. Ricky became disenchanted with the former thrilling experience and decided it was time to go home, not wanting to break any more rules. But Amber still felt high on her ride. She wanted to have as much fun as possible. Home could wait as long as it was about spending more time on her new Christmas present. You know what they say about not knowing what time the tides would hit. Amber never knew that she was having just not her best ride, but possibly her last ride. She enjoyed every bit of it, joyous and carefree, while possibly trying new cycling tricks. And all of a sudden, it became a tussle of strength. According to the report of a frantic call from 78-year-old Jimmy Kevill, after witnessing the abduction of a girl, he said he had a good view of the shopping center and he had earlier seen a little young girl ride her bicycle alone in the empty parking lot between the laundromat and the vacant grocery store. While watching her, he sees a black pickup truck pull up abruptly between the two buildings with the vehicle's engine still running. A man jumped out and aggressively dragged the girl off her bike. Amber was not taken without a fight. She kicked, screamed and struggled, but there was no one to help around and her strength was at all no match to the grown man who was exerting his full strength as he threw her into the truck and away he sped off. After the call, the police arrived at the scene in a few minutes, but the truck was gone, with no trace of the man or of Amber, except for her pink bicycle, which was abandoned unwillingly. Kevin was very detailed in his description. He described the abductor to the police as a Latino or white male in his 20s or 30s with a medium-built body and brown or maybe black hair. He further characterized the truck as a black full-size fleet-side pickup truck from the 1980s or 1990s with a short wheelbase, single cab, non-sliding glass back window, no chrome, no striping, and no evident damage. Kevill also told the police the abductor's truck booked it out of the parking lot and turned west on E. Abram Street. This description is still the yardstick for investigation till today. According to the police, there is no counter or charges to this description. These were enough descriptions to set up a search team. The whole neighborhood joined with the police department to set up several teams of about five to 10 people looking out for any sign of Amber or her abductor, but all to no avail. 
Every minute counted and became so long as the search for Amber continued. Minutes turned into hours and hours into days. With the going down and rising of the sun, it was day four already. On the fourth day after the disappearance of nine-year-old Amber on the 17th of the same month, Stuart Cocker took his Norfolk Terrier, Yoda, for a walk. At about 11.30 p.m. that Wednesday, Yoda led Cocker to a rain-swollen creek through spindly trees and muddy banks to a horrific sight. He found the body of a little girl lying face down on the concrete without any cloth on her body, but a sock on her left foot was all that was left to keep her warm. Cocker, already frightened, did not waste time reporting the body to the police department in Arlington through a distress call. The police arrive and soon confirm that the body matches that of a Berry Elementary School third grader, Amber Hagerman. During laboratory work on the body, faint traces of DNA were found, but at the time it could not provide so many results because water had washed off all evidence that could be helpful in the case. Former Arlington Police Detective Randy Lockhart talked about Amber's case at a Cleburne Rotary Club luncheon in 2021. Where the water drains from a pipe, she was laying face down on a cement slab. Thousands of gallons of water had washed over her. When it was time to take more pictures of the body, Lockhart said, We rolled Amber over and I caught her head in my hands. Leaves and twigs tangled her long dark hair. Bruises marred her pale skin. Her eyes, once a vibrant blue, were now hazy and grayish. Several lacerations to her throat. Knife or screwdriver had been used to rip her throat out, hanging by a little bit of skin. Had her eyes open and she was staring at me. You never can imagine how disheartening it is to the detectives that were on this case after finding out the possible scenario that could have played out for those four days when she was missing. The unending emotional roller coaster of hope, fear, dread, and guilt swayed in as nightmares to her parents, and this robbed them of their sanity. The if-onlys and what-ifs constantly plagued the mind of everybody. After realizing that Amber was gone forever, even though she was not the first victim, a lot of people in the neighborhood came out to lay her to rest on the 20th of January, three days after her body was found and seven days after she was declared missing. Thousands of mourners attended her funeral at the Moore Memorial Garden Cemetery. During the burial of Amber, the Methodist pastor Ann Stevens gave a tribute to her. He said, Amber is survived by a nation stunned and saddened and enraged that once again a fiendish and unspeakable evil has stricken one of our children. The loss of Amber finally set the parents far apart, but her father could not hold up for long. He carried the grief and guilt till he couldn't contain it. He later died from alcoholism and health complications in 2007 without getting closure for his daughter. After the death and burial of Amber, they birthed an Amber Alert plan as America's missing broadcast emergency response. One Texas mother, Diane Simone, called up KDMX 102.9 FM radio station and asked the midday host Kim Ashley why there wasn't a missing child alert system. If emergency alerts were sent out for weather and civil defense, why not do something similar for missing children? And that was how the Amber Plan came to be. The aim of this plan is to be activated in the most serious child abduction cases. The purpose of an Amber Alert is to quickly mobilize the community to aid in the search for and safe return of a missing child. These notifications are distributed by radio, television, road signs, mobile phones, and other data-enabled devices. In a follow-up letter to the radio station, Simone wrote, I would like to suggest an emergency system be set up so that when a verified 911 call is placed, all the radio stations in the area would be notified immediately and they would interrupt programming to broadcast an emergency alert, giving whatever information and descriptions that are pertinent. Simone asked for only one thing. If you are able to gather support for this emergency broadcast plan, my one request is that it be known as Amber's plan. Bud Kennedy, in a column for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, said, That year, seven local radio station managers from competing chains, including Dan Bennett and Tyler Cox, of what is now Cumulus Media's WBAP 820 AM and KLIF 570 AM, did the hard work to set up a local broadcast alert system similar to those for thunderstorms. And that was how Amber's plan started off as a mid-radio broadcast to becoming a full-blown system of its own. On the 30th of April 2003, President George W. Bush signed into law the PROTECT Act. Our nation grieves with every family that has suffered unbearable loss. And our nation will fight threats against our children. This law marks important progress in the protection of America's children. And now it is my honor to sign the PROTECT Act of 2003. 
Hence we have the Amber Alert under the Office of Justice Programs in the Department of Justice. The new law would also increase federal punishments for child abduction and other crimes against children. Judges will now be able to order prolonged monitoring of sex offenders who have been released from jail. And some repeat sex offenders in our society will now face life in prison, ensuring that they never do damage again. The department also gave a guidance on criteria for issuing Amber Alerts. There must be a reasonable belief by law enforcement that an abduction has occurred. The law enforcement agency feels the youngster is in imminent danger of significant bodily harm or death. There is sufficient information that is comprehensive about the victim and their abduction for law authorities to issue an Amber Alert in order to aid in the child's rescue. A youngster aged 17 or younger has been kidnapped. The child's name and other important data components, including the child abduction flag, must have been recorded in the National Crime Information Center NCIC, system. Did you know that as of 2021, the total number of missing child entries into the FBI's National Crime Information Center NCIC, was 337,195? That is ridiculous, so you see the need for a missing person system that focuses squarely on missing and exploited children. As at today, the Amber Alert system is being used in all 50 states in the United States of America. We have in the District of Columbia, Indian Country, Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands, and internationally in 31 countries. So far from the statistics of the Amber Alert given on the 2nd of January 2023, it is recorded that 1,127 children were successfully recovered through the Amber Alert system, and 131 children were rescued because of wireless emergency alerts. There are 82 Amber Alert plans throughout the whole United States. We must applaud the system for this great gift to the community because this would not have been possible without them in action. At a press conference held on the 25th anniversary of Amber's death, law enforcement and Amber's mother, Donna Williams, sought to commemorate the child's short life and the creation of the system that honored her name. Her mother, Donna, has been a stronghold in upholding the Amber Alert banner to keep the notion going. She's made several appearances in the press and is very confident that the fight is not going to last forever. Sooner or later, the killer will be apprehended and judged according to the law. She's still taking care of little children like she did her younger brother. Donna said, wearing a button with Amber's photograph and a gold necklace with her name, I'm very, very proud of my daughter. When I hear the Amber Alert and I hear their child is back reunited to their parents, you know, I look up to heaven and, and say, oh, you did it again, baby girl. Authorities took the opportunity to update the public about the state of the investigation into Amber's murder. The Arlington Police Department spokesman said that there was new forensic testing technology available that they believed would build a more complete DNA profile of the killer and generate new leads. On a yearly basis, I talk with all the major laboratories around the country to see if there's any new technologies or anything that we could possibly be trying with the evidence that we have. And that has what is what's led to some new developments where we can try some things this year. I want to make clear here today, we believe this case will get solved. We believe that there's no way the killer in this case could have committed the crime in the manner that they did without someone seeing, hearing, or having some knowledge of what happened. Although the officials didn't state how long it would take for the evidence to be tested, while much of the evidence was assuredly washed away by rain and the thousands of gallons of water draining from the culvert at the crime scene, the police could very well possess critical forensic evidence left behind by the perpetrator. From the report of the police given by Detective Grant Gilden, who has been on the case from day one, the police have processed to tender the evidence that they have held onto for so long, which is the possible answer to our prayer on this case. We're not willing to say exactly what what it is we are submitting, but we are submitting evidence that we've maintained for 25 years that we believe could possibly uh, provide us with results that could be a, a DNA profile. That's what we're we're working on is trying to enhance that. It's evidence we've maintained um, this, all this time. Detective Grant Gilden, who is now the head of this case, said. The reason behind this new development is the result of other cold cases that have been solved through the use of DNA technology, and these cases are a typical example that Amber's case can be solved too. We are confident that this case will be solved, Gildan stated. We believe that the killer in this case could not have committed the crime in the manner in which they did without someone seeing, hearing, or knowing what happened. We believe that someone out there still has information that can assist us. 
He added, You will be shocked to discover that this new technology has solved one of the coldest cases. In 1974, a 17-years-old Carla Walker was abducted the night of Valentine's Day dance. Carla was sexually assaulted, strangled, and murdered. She was left lifeless in the ditch. During the course of the investigation, some relatively small and faint traces of DNA were found on Carla, but this did not give answers until after 46 years. 46 years of investigating, 46 years of trial and error, and years of interrogation, but finally justice was served to 77-years-old Glenn McCurley, who had, on several interrogations with the police, denied all allegations. Another reference we have to this new DNA forensic technology was the double homicide case way back in 1956. If you think the Carla case was cold, wait till you hear this. After 65 years, the Cascade County Sheriff's Office were able to solve the death of one Lloyd Duane Bogle Patricia Kalitsk, who was murdered on the 3rd and 4th of January in 1956. In 2021, through the use of DNA and forensic genealogy, the results of this lab work linked to an extended family who has his DNA in a public database. A reverse family tree was constructed by the police and the lab operators, and this led to Kenneth Gould, the actual killer of Patricia and Bogle. Sadly, Gould had died in 2007, but it gave a lot of closure to the family of the deceased to know who was responsible for the death of their children. There is also the 34-year-old Georgia murder case of Stacey Lynn and Jennifer Brinkman case. This forensic technology also led to the arrest of the Golden State killer Joseph James D'Angelo Jr., who was finally arrested in 2018. At one point or another, these cases had felt like a dead end and unprogressive. Likewise, the Amber case kept it going with the determination of everyone involved directly and indirectly, and we believe the same for Amber. Police said the technology they plan to use in Amber's case is still being developed. The Arlington Police Department spokesman said that there was new forensic testing technology available and they believed it would build a more complete DNA profile of the killer and generate new leads. Detective Grant Gilden, who took over as the Arlington Assistant Police Chief Kevin Colby said, Because the technology is new and it's advanced, we are excited that this year, hopefully by February, we will submit this new evidence to see if we can get an enhanced DNA profile. Nearly three decades and 7,000 tips later, it's hard not to feel that law enforcement is no closer to providing answers to Amber's heartbroken family. But the cold case made fresh headlines in 2023 with the release of a new Peacock original documentary, Amber, the girl behind the alert. The film covers Amber's case and the Amber Alert system. It was released by Peacock on January 17, 2023, which marked the 27th anniversary of Amber's homicide. Although it is two months past the intended date of the result, we are still hopeful for a positive result. 27 years after the death of an angel, her legacy still lives on with the same valor and determination as if it had just started.